Fifteen years ago, Hugh Jackman donned the claws once more for his first solo outing as the iconic Wolverine. The only issue? The writer strike of 2007 and 2008, causing the film to begin production with an incomplete script, followed by a plethora of studio disputes. All of this resulted in the subject of this episode of Studio Cinema Saturday, the show where we review films old and new, the ones you don't like and the ones you do. I'm your host, Jackson Hamm. This is your co-host, Dalton Sherrill. Today we're talking X-Men Origins Wolverine 15 years later, the film where things continue to happen until it ends. This film was directed by Gavin Hood, and it stars Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, Leif Schreiber as Sabretooth, Danny Houston as William Stryker, Glenn Collins as Silver Fox, Ryan Reynolds as Wade Wilson, Will I Am as John Wraith, and Taylor Kitsch as Remy LeBeau. To start off this review, I want to talk about our frame of reference for this film, you know. Where were we when we watched this film? This was Dalton's first viewing, so tell me, what's your frame of reference for this movie? I have kind of seen all of the X-Men films that I've watched out of order. Uh, I've seen the first X-Men, I've seen X2, I've seen The Wolverine, I've seen Logan, and then I watched this film last night, and I don't know, wasn't, wasn't very impressed by it in comparison to the other films that I just mentioned. Well, it's not a very impressive film to begin with. Then my frame of reference is I saw this as an eight-year-old boy in theaters. And of course, every eight-year-old who watches a movie is just like, heck yeah, Wolverine. Fifteen years pass, and I watch it in its complete and utter unholiness. And, you know, it, we're here. We're doing the review. So let's, uh, let's get into X-Men Origins Wolverine. Origins. How did this movie come about? Well, we got to go back to the beginning of the X-Men franchise with X-Men from 2000. That movie did good. They're going to get a second movie, X2, X-Men United. And then the rumors start to go around at Marvel Comics that they're going to do Wolverine's Origins in that movie. And Wolverine's Origins in the comics, it's not set in stone at that point. You know, you've got bits and pieces, Weapon X program, Team X, all of that. Things that are covered in this movie, mind you. So Marvel says, you know what? We gotta do the set in stone origin for Wolverine. And that is Wolverine Origin, a book that delves into the 1800s Canadian man known as James Howlett, who would eventually become the Wolverine. And, you know, we get that in the intro of X Men Origins Wolverine, the 1800s stuff, and him going through history. This film starts to kind of come together around 2005, a year before X Men The Last Stand is set to release. They start going, we need to make a Wolverine movie, you know, because the X-Men trilogy's coming to a close with The Last Stand, and Hugh Jackman's just so great, we need to get him his own movie. Also, he's a central character in these movies because he's so popular, and if he's so popular, we need to do a movie for Wolverine. Sounds like a great idea. Scripts start getting written up in 2005 and 2006, and then a little bit in 2007, and then there's a little thing called The Writer's Strike that begins. And then 2008, the writer strike continues. Uh, one of those scripts actually was uh, co-authored by uh, Game of Thrones' David Benioff. And if you've seen season eight of Game of Thrones, you know that that man needs to be as far away from any screenplay as possible. We get to around 2008 and it's time to roll on production. And the movie begins with an incomplete script and the rest of production, you know, goes along. We get the movie we got, X-Men Origins Wolverine. That's a little brief history of kind of how it came to be. I think it's a interesting story. More interesting than the story presented in the movie itself, I think. And I'll say something. With a film that had so many red herrings in its production like it did, I mean, in modern times, it probably would have been scrapped before it ever hit the screen with all the rewrites and the writer's strike and just everything that went into making this movie. Exactly, exactly. Talking about all these rewrites, all these script drafts, you know, it makes me think of something that's rumored to be going on with a current movie for Marvel, Blade. Maybe maybe that's a sign of things to come for that movie, or not holding out hope, but very similar things with multiple scripts being written for years on end. And this movie, oddly enough, it came out at a turning point in comic book movies. This came out in 2009, a year before, you get three, you know, pretty important movies. Iron Man and Incredible Hulk. The Dark Knight. And The Dark Knight. Uh, you know, two of those are 
the beginning of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, which would go on to become a juggernaut at the box office, and then the Dark Knight, you know, the middle no part of masters. Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy, and widely considered one of the best comic book movies, and one of the best Batman films ever put on screen. And then in 2009, just a year later, we get this. And then- Far Cry from... Probably all three of those, and The Incredible Hulk is not a widely lauded movie, and it's even a far cry from that. So, before we, you know, dogpile the movie, let's talk about what works. What works. And the opening of this movie works great. I mean, you said you got into the opening of this movie, you're like, ah, this is pretty cool. It has a really strong start. We have this scene that's in, I think, like 1845, where... uh, Wolverine kills his dad after he gets his bone claws and, Mm -hmm. you know, the scene between the brothers. And then they're just taken off through American history. They fight in the Civil War, World War I, World War II, Vietnam. And you have these really, like, smooth transitions between all of that as the, I believe, like, the credits are happening. Yes. And, yeah, I love that. Really creative. Something with that opening montage, you get the relationship between Sabretooth and Wolverine, which I think is another positive. Hugh Jackman and Leah Schreiber portraying Sabretooth and Wolverine in their kind of competitive relationship. You get to see them, both of them, stay together as brothers. Brothers stay together, Jimmy, or whatever Sabretooth said. And you get to see them fight through all those wars. And progressively throughout, you get to see kind of Sabretooth's more violent nature and sadistic nature come out as Wolverine tries to temper it. And that ends with Vietnam. And then we get into the film proper. But we're going to stay on the positive because it's all downhill after the montage ends. Uh, Hugh Jackman and Leah Schreiber, I said, portray the competitiveness and rivalry between Wolverine and Sabretooth very well as two guys that are just going to live for a long time until they both just croak or one of them kills the other. And I like that aspect. And something that this movie added to that aspect is in the comics, it was only ever implied they had a familial connection. This movie decided to outright just make them brothers. Continuing with what works in this movie, Ryan Reynolds is Wade Wilson. Yeah, at the beginning of the movie, pre-mouth sewn shut, uh, both of us say that Ryan Reynolds, you know, he did he did good work with what he had, and what he had was an incomplete script. Ryan Reynolds, most of his dialogue as Wade Wilson, of course... Improv. Improv. He improvised it and wrote it himself, just for the movie. That's a so, testament to him as an actor, like... Really that's well a testament done. to him as an actor, and, you know, future Deadpool installments, he did the same thing. So it's like, we get a little bit of Deadpool future good Deadpool origins yeah here and this is a film that's chock full of bad dialogue or just you know very basic middle of the road cookie cutter lines you could use in any movie and his scenes actually kind of shine especially in the beginning of the movie he's quipping he's doing the Deadpool thing he's doing about everything Deadpool should do except break the fourth wall so you get proto Deadpool here and it's not done terribly another thing that's good in concept you know, there's a caveat to this, is the action. It's done pretty well in concept. You, you know, sticking with Deadpool, his little sword thing. Whenever he's deflecting the bullets in that opening, like, mission, uh, whenever he comes in and he's slicing them all up and you see the reflection of the guy behind him in his katana and, you know, he cuts the bullet in half, that's some cool spectacle. Like, this movie has action scenes that are very much over the top, that you live in for a moment because of these slow-mo sequences. And you're either, you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Not all of it's good, but the action that you can see, there's at least a cool over-the-top concept going on. You can at least say, like, they're trying something, even if nothing else is working for you. Something's going on that at least pleases my eyeballs and, like, a primal part of my brain. The cinematographers and the VFX artists, they're doing their, their job. They're trying their best with what they're given. The last thing I think we got to talk about that works is the Weapon X scene. You know, getting the adamantium bonded to his skin, Wolverine, and you really like it because of the kind of primal rage that he burst out in when learning that they're going to wipe his memory. Yes, like, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine has always been a strong focal point of these X-Men movies, and... I don't know, I just really liked this scene. Whenever he bursts out of the little, like, water enclosement that they have him in, and he's screaming after they say that they're going to wipe his memory, thought that was a really powerful moment in a mostly lackluster film. 
to talk about lackluster elements, even within that Weapon X scene, there's some lackluster elements. We're gonna go into just the... Let's shit on it a little. Let's go, let's go into the thing that everybody likes to do with this movie and talk about the bad, because there's a lot to talk about. Let's start with where we last left off with what we liked, the Weapon X scene, and those goofy, like, fade-ins and stuff from, like, a very 90s, early 2000s style kind of film. Yeah, no, we're recounting his relationship with Victor, and then what's the woman he has a relationship with? She's Silver Fox. So, but... Kayla. Kayla. I yeah, think. that's, that's her, her person name. Uh, yeah, you kind of have this little recollection montage of his memories cut together in this little black and white, and we're kind of fading in some shots over others, and it's just, it's very kind of like antiquated, early 2000s cheese that, you know, doesn't really pull on my heartstrings at all. It's not probably making, it's not conveying the intended, I guess, emotion that they're trying to go for. It just kind of comes off as cheese nowadays. And with this fade-in, we kind of get into the pacing of this film, because a lot happens in this movie, and the, and, it, and it's not paced well at all. <laughs> like a bad roller coaster, you said. Absolutely. And not knowing, you know, comic book Wolverine and his lore, we talked a little bit about this before the review, and you were saying that they've pretty much combined a bunch of Wolverine storylines and jam-packed them into this one movie. Yes, this movie covers a lot of ground for, like, Wolverine's origins within the comics, just combining all kinds of stuff, throwing in all kinds of different elements as well, and it's just this unholy matrimony of all these jumbled plot lines that even in the comics can get convoluted, getting even more convoluted in one movie. Absolutely. Bland dialogue. There's hardly... King of it. Hardly any memorable lines in this movie. I I remember some dialogue between, you know, Wolverine and Sabretooth about, you know, brothers gotta stick together, and they kind of have a callback to that at the end of the movie. But besides that, I really don't remember much. Yeah, there's not much to remember. Like, maybe a few lines that maybe you can make a joke out of, just because it's... Tell me something, Jimmy. Do you even know how to kill me? I'm gonna cut your goddamn head off. And, you know, this, this, is, this is a movie that, comparable, in a way, to The Room, almost, where a lot of elements are just not good, but even The Room has some memorable lines that you can quote. Oh, you can not. laugh at. You can laugh at it, you can quote it. This one doesn't even really have that, because it's just kind of bland action movie dialogue a lot of the time. It could have been, like, a, ten, a teenager or a couple of teenagers who just read a couple X-Men comics and just sat down and wrote the screenplay, and I eh, believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And moving on, like, CGI in this movie. Wolverine's claws have been done on screen before, and I'll say the bone claws at the beginning of the film are done very well. They look good. They look kind of nasty, and I think that's a good element to add to, like, actual just claw bones popping out of your hands. And it's kind of gross. Yeah, they're talking about how he's, you know, an animal the whole time. That's kind of something he's, you know, wrestling with. Like, am I, am I becoming, I don't know, a person or am I gonna kind of dip into this sort of primal side of myself and really just let loose yes yes and then we get to the adamantium claws which just look bad and the adamantium claws were the only claws we had seen on screen to this point and they look good in those other movies but here it's just nah, I'm just not hitting the mark especially in that scene where he's in the mirror and he's just kind of looking yeah, at him yeah where he's like his inspecting his new claws and yeah. it's like you know it's crazy that it's bad because iron man had just come out a year before and that looks good technical marvel we get this and it's just like why, why is it it looks so fake and you might think like i don't know they're trying to go for a new adamantium very shiny type of look like new metal new shiny toy and it's just not working it's just not working at all and you know probably also just a production issue at this point the films had plenty of them cgi just add it to the list and the butchering of deadpool another thing you know you know here's deadpool right here we have deadpool here and we have a little figure of him on our setup right here and it's not how he looks in this movie nah he's something else bald i mean they gave him the little eye diamonds Right. I bet they thought they were real clever for doing that, but it doesn't work. Um, he's got the Baraka Katana arms from, like, Mortal Kombat. And, you know, the Merc with the Mouth 
has no mouth in at the end of this movie. You know, we get that Wade Wilson at the beginning, and then we get the Deadpool. That's what I'll stick to calling him because they kind of make it like a pool of mutant powers. The I don't know where the dead part comes in. Maybe Wade Wilson is dead at this point. He's just a meat puppet with all these powers. I don't. I don't know. They they they're not giving us much to work with here. The the plot point itself, like I think you can take any other character or even just create an original character because I liked the idea of them taking the mutants and giving all the powers to this new weapon. But don't do it to Deadpool. Don't massacre my boy like that. Humans taking mutants and doing screwed up things to them is an Running integral theme. part <laughs> of you know X Men storylines. Yeah. And. They could have they could have definitely made a whole cloth new character here. I mean, they did it in Logan, the X-24 clone of Wolverine. That's not really a character in the comics. So just make, like, a new character here. I mean, of course, that would have wasted Ryan Reynolds' potential as Deadpool, but maybe in this alternate universe they don't cast... They just make a new character and cast yeah. somebody as him. And, you know, it's an interesting concept, just not for the pre-established character of Deadpool, who was well-established at this point, created in the 90s. This is 2009. He's had some time, and he's even he even evolved over that time from when he was created to when X-Men Origins came out. They basically just took Deadpool and ruined him. And Ryan Reynolds, of course, I told you this, and you really liked this, uh, after, you know, seeing what they did with the character, he told, you know, Fox executives and producers, he was like, wow, the fans are going to go nuts when they see this. And the execs and producers, you know, being a little tone deaf as they can be in Hollywood, we're like, oh, that's great to hear. We love to hear that. And Ryan Reynolds was just like, I didn't mean it as a compliment. Because what they did was downright disrespectful. It did, totally disrespectful to the character as a whole. And Ryan Reynolds, you know, when he got the role, he read the comics and he yeah, he knew a little bit about Deadpool beforehand as well. And he was like, "Yo, this is cool that we're gonna do this. We're gonna get. I'm gonna. We should. We we could totally do a whole Deadpool movie." And you do get the kind of seed sprinkled here of what would eventually become the 2016 proper Deadpool movie. But here, we just get this oh, we guy. Yeah. We get we get this this guy. You know, this horror movie creature. Yes, we get this demon Deadpool thing kind of end off bad things about this movie we've been talking about it for a good bit here you know bad pacing bland dialogue bad cgi poor portrayal of characters that are already beloved this movie is just everything in one it's all kinds of different movies crammed into one movie you got the romance revenge story the historical fiction historic, at the beginning historical fiction government conspiracy the whole like mutant subjugation plot line at the end and an X-Men tie-in with Professor X. And of course just the comic book superhero just lens. The, the whole comic book superhero lens and it's just everything crammed into one so I, I, I guess you know they did take all those scripts and put it into one because I don't know what was in all those scripts but it feels like they just said well take this element take this element throw it in here and throw it in here and yeah, it'll be a good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be a good movie. It'll make money. And it did make money. I think it made its budget back. It did. Um, but but yeah. at the cost of critics and probably everybody else being like, wow, that wasn't that good. 15 years later, what what's the legacy of this movie besides some funny jokes for in the Deadpool films where they poke fun at it? And, I mean, what came out of it, you know? I, we can say that Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool came out of it. Hugh Jackman luckily remained being Wolverine even after this experience out of probably love for playing the character and dump trucks of money that they backed up to his door to be like, we're sorry, here, we're going to do a good Wolverine movie this time. And, you know, the Wolverine trilogy, we get... This is the starting point for a Wolverine trilogy in the Fox X-Men universe, you know? They're very loosely connected, but I guarantee you I'm like a big wig executive producer level they're like this is the this is the this is the wolverine trilogy guys which is so strange to me whenever he told me that i was like what they're supposed to be a trilogy because i watched this film and the wolverine the film that comes after this in the trilogy is actually a pretty good film and logan is an even greater film so i don't know what was going on i was I don't know what was going through their heads while they were while the many heads that were making this film who, who knows but 
practice makes perfect, as you said, and with each subsequent Wolverine film, it got better. So we got two more good Wolverine films because this one made money, and, you know, we gotta talk about just everything leading up to this movie. It feels like a movie that was doomed to fail from the start. Like, starting day one without a complete script is already just a death omen, it seems, for any type of production. Absolutely. Script issues... I mean, the movie came out in 2009, and pre-production, like early, early pre-production, writing and ideas and stuff like that, that started in 2005. And, you know, they were trying to get the ball rolling on this before the last movie in the X-Men trilogy came out, and still just struggle after struggle after struggle. And they got to the finish line pretty uh, bloody and beaten and barely alive it seems they were wolverine <laughs> with the multiple adamantium bullets in his head by the end yeah, of this yeah, by film. the end of the movie yes yes then the rest of the movies treated that movie the same way they were like huh what happened i don't know i'm just gonna Origins? disregard it yeah very much so and you know 15 years later what would you rate this film ultimately i've been thinking on this a lot i'm gonna give it a five out of ten it does a lot of bad things. The dialogue's not great. The plot is all over the place. The performances are pretty good. But the cinematography, the spectacle, the editing, some of the VFX, I can admire and appreciate. And it still gave me an entertaining watch. So I'm going to go completely middle of the road, 5 out of 10. Not a, not a great movie, but not just a downright terrible movie. It lives somewhere in the middle camp. I'll say that's a very fair score. You're being very fair to the movie. Um, I'll give it three Wolverine busting out of the waters out of ten. You know, three of those out of ten. As a comic book fan, it's not a good movie for Wolverine. And it butchers other characters in the, pro in the process, which is never a fun thing to witness. And just as a movie fan, as a person who likes cinema and you know makes movies with everybody here at studio 24 you can't help but just be like wow that's just kind of it's a stinker you know it's not that good and closing out you know not that good of a movie but hey we're talking about it we're having a good time talking about it everything the legacy of this film it could be an ironic film like the room but i think the more interesting stuff is about how it got done how it got made I think is a far more interesting story than the movie itself. So look into that. There's lots of entertaining videos that I watched myself going into it, and the Wikipedia has some interesting facts and such, so go look that up, and hey, if you've seen this movie, tell us what you thought 15 years later. Think about the past 15 years since it's come out. Tell us what you think. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Studio Cinema Saturday. Stay tuned. We have far more content on the horizon for this channel, including October, get ready to get spooky with Studio 24's Horror Month. Four short films culminating in October 31st for a great viewing experience. Get your snacks ready, get your candy ready. It's gonna be a great time in October. We have other horror shorts if you wanna check them out now. They Took Her and Don't Press Record. Don't Press Record, done by Dalton Sherrill, yours truly here sitting across from me. And of course, this is Studio Cinema Saturday. We have other episodes of Studio Cinema Saturday where we review films old like Captain America the Winter Soldier and new like Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. We also have our sister show, TV Tuesday, where we reviewed shows like Invincible, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, and newer shows like Tires. So go give those videos a watch, show them some love, and we'll see you at the next watch. Yeah. What a stinker, man. Yeah, that movie sucked. Yeah. You know, the review was fun though, at least. I mean Yeah. I mean deep down what do you what do you really think of this movie?